You're listening to the Back Home Network, presented by Homefield Apparel. And welcome, Hoosier fans, to another victorious episode of the Assembly Call as tonight your Indiana Hoosiers battle and fight and scratch and claw to steal a road win in Chrysler Arena against a desperate Michigan team on a day when a lot didn't go right for Indiana and a lot of the execution wasn't great and we're going to talk about it but man for a team that really struggled playing defense early in the game when they needed stops late they got them and the Hoosiers win it 62 to 61 the win moves Indiana to 18 and 7 on the season and into sole possession of second place in big t- in the Big 10 at 9 and 5. I'm Jared Morris. I'm here with the coach Brian Tonsoni and Ryan Phillips and we are going to break it all down for you on this edition of the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. And let's start this show the way we start every show and that is with our Hoosier Proud Banner moment. And look, Indiana was down 61 to 58 at the under 4 minute timeout. And, you know, Jalen Huchifino and Trace Jackson Davis, as they did all night long, provided the huge offensive boost for Indiana. Jalen with the alley-oop to Trace, and then Jalen getting fouled and making the free throws to put Indiana up 62-61. to And then it's like both teams just forgot how to run offense, and Indiana turns it over on the sidelines and turns it over again. But every time they made a big defensive play, Trace Jackson Davis with the block shot, Trey Galloway with the big steal, but the banner moment... The last nine seconds of the game, it's 62-61, Michigan takes a timeout, Indiana plays excellent defense to force a really tough shot, and that was the story of the game for me, is, you know, Indiana, without Race Thompson, just really struggled defensively early in this game, but they stuck with it, and they kept fighting, and they did what they had to do to go and get a big road win, just... Just a, a tremendous result for Indiana. You know, I got a text from my dad right after the game. He said, ugly, but a win, survived, good defense at the end. That is the sign of a good team. And that is right, because Indiana won without an important player and without playing their best, but they found a way to do it. This is what the really good IU teams do, folks. They win games like this somehow, some way. Tonight they did it. Huge, huge win for Indiana tonight at Michigan. Okay, let's talk about our presenting sponsor. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this episode of the Assembly Call and every episode of the Back Home Network presented by our friends at Home Field Apparel, now in their sixth season of sponsoring the Assembly Call and their second as the presenting sponsor for the Back Home Network. And you know it, still wearing the t-shirt, ladies and gentlemen, and the t-shirt is still bringing magic. Women's team beats Iowa, men's team goes on the road and beats Michigan. It's that home field magic. And by the way, you know what I appreciate, Coach, about Home Field Apparel? They're releasing a Michigan collection, but they're not doing it until Monday. That way, Michigan didn't get the benefit of home field magic, and it'll have worn off by the time we play them again. Look, folks, home field apparel, they have the greatest designs. If you've seen, they've been releasing quarter zips for other schools. You know there's going to be a sweet IU quarter zip coming. They just released hats with the oval logo, so they're expanding their product line, and all of the products have these really unique, interesting vintage logos. It's great material. The colors last through many washings. They're just an awesome company by IU people in Indianapolis. Go to homefieldapparel.com. Use our promo code HOME, H-O-M-E, to get 15% off your first order. That's homefieldapparel.com. Promo code HOME for 15% off. Wear one for the team. All right. Well, let's find. That's uh, time to uh, move the ball, find the open man, get some opening thoughts from the rest of our team. And we will start with the coach, Tom Sony. Over to you, Coach. It's not Sony time. Your opening <laughs> thoughts on this IU win. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm so excited. I'm glad I'm on the show. Otherwise, I'd be going and shopping at home field and buying like thousands of things in, in, in all of my celebration. What, what a night tonight for your Indiana Hoosiers. They did not play perfectly, but they overcame a lot of the issues. And I thought really tonight the, that Coach did a really good job of, of changing things up. When they weren't guarding in the first half, he went to his zone. Then he went to a little three-man switch or that nail slot stuff, and, and that just changed that buffkin getting down the rim. It stopped him, and he didn't score again in the second half. 
And, and I thought some plays coming out of timeouts were really, really solid. And he got TJD the ball at the high post after a couple of post-ups. He didn't stick with the post-ups too long like he has in the past. And, and, and when you're a little bit shorthanded, I thought he managed the, the rotations as best he possibly could. I thought this was a great effort that the players struggled today. Coach Woodson didn't. And, and so that's really a solid effort. Uh, I thought, uh, from the coaching staff to get these guys to a point where they can make the plays to win and credit to the guys because they struggled for the first 14 minutes. They were a little lackadaisical on the road, but, boy, they kept fighting. And that's what you want from your team, that fight. Things aren't always going to be smooth every possession, but do you stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, and make contributions to win, and we won the game. Heck, yeah, we did. Ryan, it's rant time. What you got? Yeah, All you need to know about this game is if you look at the first half stats, Michigan shot 51.7% from the field. And it felt like the only time they weren't getting what they or they were getting what they wanted every time they were just missing some shots in the second half. They shot 32% from the field, only made eight field goals. That was the game right there. And they were one of seven from three. Indiana's defense won this game. And that that's obvious looking at Michigan only scoring 61, but sometimes teams beat themselves. I think Indiana really bothered Michigan, uh, and Michigan's offense. I thought Michigan ran some poor stuff, but Indiana's defense stepped up. And I want to highlight one guy specifically uh, who was guarding a guy who's going to be a lottery pick in the NBA. Miller Cop played his ass off tonight defensively. Sure did. Uh, Jet Howard had 12 points. Again, that guy is going to be a lottery pick and almost certainly Trace or, or Race Thompson would have been guarding him in this game. He's 6'8, he's athletic, he can shoot, and he hasn't always been perfect this year, but the guy is really, really good. There is zero reason why he should not have been beating Miller Cop like a drum tonight. The only reason he didn't is because of Cop's effort. He played incredibly hard on defense, and it was never more so on display than on that last possession. He ran around a screen, got there. As soon as Howard caught it, he was right up on him without fouling, kept his arms up, bothered that shot, and the shot had no chance of going in, and that was because of the defense. I think Trey Galloway played some pretty good defense. I thought Galloway struggled on offense tonight, to say the least, but he made up for it on the defensive end. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Huchifino just carrying the team, but you need to note those other guys stepping up and cop on Jet Howard, a matchup that when I heard that Race Thompson was out, I was like, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do there. Do you put do you put a much shorter guy, Trey Galloway, on him? What do you do? Cop worked his ass off tonight to he struggled that. early because he did the he kid did. went off for nine early but then cop yes, stayed did. with it and that's he the point did. they stayed with yep. it stayed and with it and he half, made the key in stop the, in the second half jed howard had three points and yeah, that's, to that's me, awesome that's the difference in the game right there dickinson got nine nobody else did anything for michigan and jed howard is expected to step up there and he got three points and a lot of that credit goes to miller cop Yeah. Look, you know, I texted you guys. I tweeted out before the game. I didn't have a great feeling about this one. You know, it felt like the kind of game where, you know, Indiana's coming off of two big emotional home victories, Uh, you know, felt like they might be ripe for an emotional letdown. And Michigan, you know, should have been playing with their hair on fire with their NCAA tournament lives at stake. And I thought that's kind of how the first 15 minutes of the game went. And then Indiana really turned it around there at the end of the first half. You know, really, I mean, if Scoop makes a couple of layups, this game could have been tied at halftime. But Indiana's down four. And then, you know, again, Michigan pushed the lead out to nine. They pushed the lead out to seven. And Indiana just kept making plays. And, Coach, I want to talk about Jalen Huchifino. Well, can I add because one I, more thing? I, I, yeah. I just Because I was talking about Cop, and we're probably not going to get back to him because he didn't do much else. He played 39 minutes. He's going to win that's, the Hustle Award. That's that the much. other <laughs> thing is that he was out there. You know, you look at Trace Jackson Davis, played all 40. But Cop played 39. And again, worth noting the contributions guys make when they don't light up the box score. It's worth yes. noting that because that's what makes a good team. You know, it may not it may not be big statistically, may not make an all big 10 team, but those kind of contributions throughout the lineup are what make you a winning team. And so no, you're uh, right. And you know what? Cop, Cop has spent four years in college as a shooter. This is a guy whose role was to shoot. And what happens a lot of times with shooters when they're not getting shots? Other parts of their game suffer. They get frustrated. And there has been none of that with Miller Cop. He's ready when the opportunities come, and he just consistently gives you the effort and the fight, and that's the kind of stuff that you need on the road. So I agree. A tremendous effort from him. Coach, let's talk about Jalen Huchofino. I thought he really, in some key ways, you know, kind of grew up tonight. Um, you know, he's been a guy who has struggled on the road, but I thought there was a stretch in the second half when Indiana was down 53-48, to 48, 
you know, and it was kind of one of those stretches that we saw a lot in the second half. It's like, okay, Indiana struggling a little bit offensively. Is this where Michigan makes a little run and kind of puts some distance between them? And, you know, you'll recall, Jalen has that drive. He falls. I don't know if he got fouled or not, but he fell hard. He gets up. He's holding his elbow. And then the very next possession, he comes right back and scores on a jumper. Four straight points, you know, playing through some pain, playing through some struggles. I just thought the mental and physical toughness that he showed tonight with so much on his shoulders, you know, because just, you know, we have our quibbles with the offense, but that is what this team is right now. They're going to play through Trace. Jalen's going to get, you know, his opportunities. And essentially when he's making shots and scoring, we have a chance to be really good, you know, as we were tonight. And so I just thought for him to battle through that and battle through six turnovers and battle through foul trouble and just to keep coming back late and to make those big plays, man, that's a lot to put on a freshman. And he responded. Just a really tremendous night for him, I thought. Uh, yes, and I will add that the, he had six straight points, I believe, in the first half, too, when Indiana yes. w- was down, you know, seven, eight, nine points. And he got off to, a, I think, a real shaky start, as did most Indiana Hoosiers. They were, you know, you got to figure it out. They're either trying too hard to make plays. I wrote down, hit singles and doubles, don't go for home runs. And I think sometimes Hood Shafino cares so much. Do that on he's the on the road. And then then you try too hard and you force some shots, you know, and he's, he, he's put in a position to do that. The, the ball yes. screen, the p- heavy post, heavy point guard offense puts that into his decision-making. But I thought he, he struggled a little bit. I thought Trace Jackson Davis struggled a little on that fast break when he tried to throw the ball to Geronimo. I thought they all were trying to hit home runs to get a win on the road. And what you got to do on the road is simplify things. You just got to play really good, strong, fundamental, hit the guy in the shooting pocket, you know, make a, uh, a pass fake, do those things. And within the game, Jared, you're absolutely right. Hood Shafino calmed down, found his groove, and was a huge part of, of winning on both ends. And, and that's what you want out of, out of players, no matter what their year is, uh, is to win within the game, is to get better within the game. And boy, Hood Shafino did that, uh, you know, despite some some shots that, you know, possession by possession, if you coach for perfection, you're going to go watch film and say this wasn't a good shot or you threw the ball to Geronimo in the middle of the zone when he wasn't ready. You're going to coach that. But overall, he is just fantastic. And, and he did show some maturity growth within the game and just stepped up big down the stretch. Ryan, what were your thoughts on Jalen's performance tonight? I thought it was an even performance. I thought that, you know, in, in both halves, he, I mean, what do you get? He had a le- 10 in the first half, 11 in the second, I think. And, and just, I mean, he did have too many turnovers. I think that, the, you know, the game and that a lot of those were early and I, or some of those were early right. and I felt like he was just kind of getting away from himself. And you saw that from Trey Galloway too. And, and, Galloway only had the one turnover, but it just felt like it was loose. He wasn't, you know, con- playing within his body. You know, the ball was out here a lot, not right in, in, in the pocket. And um, I just think that can happen to guys on the road, especially young guys and role players. We've talked about that repeatedly is your role players don't play as well on the road. And I think that's the same about your young guys. And so I thought starting Jalen Hutchfino, I thought th- starting the game out, I thought he was a little kind of rattled and and maybe just not locked in. And it had been this kind of thing we'd seen where it's maybe like a game on, a game off, game on, a game off. And he really settled into the game. And I think he settled into the game when he realized, hey, um, I'm better than these guys. And, you know, I mean, like, and here's the thing is like, you can look at recruiting rankings and you can look at your numbers and you can look at all that. But until you're on the floor with somebody, it takes a little bit of time to really have that confidence. And I think he was just confident. He landed. It looked like he hit his funny bone really hard because yeah. uh, you could see him just kind of shaking it out. And then to come down and take that shot on the next possession, I was like, whoa, Jalen, hey, give yourself a couple of possessions. But, and, then it, and then it went in. <laughs> and honestly, he went right. And I was like, if I'm Michigan, I'm forcing him left. And they didn't. He went right, took a pull up. Um really a nice game for him and and again he had the 21 points but it didn't feel like this game where he dominates it felt like he just played a really good game and played yep. kept the ball moving kept getting it to trace when he was open kept you know taking those screens and trying to find gaps in the defense and again it probably if this is a game where they score 70 80 he's probably at 25 and has four more assists you know but it didn't feel like that this was a game where you needed your point guard on the road to just be good and he was good and again, to score 21 points, made all four of his free throws, that's great. But really, the game as a whole just felt like it. And, and where he paid off the most was on defense. Their guards yeah. couldn't do much against him. And that that's as valuable as anything he did on offense. He was calm. The one thing yes, I'm appreciating I mean more about, and more like, every game. 
absolutely solid. Whether he's 1 or 14 at Maryland or whatever else, his facial expression, he is just – he's at work. He's doing his business. He's learning on the fly. He doesn't let negativity get to him. At least it doesn't show on the court. Um, but he, he is just calm, and that's what you want out of a point guard. You're running your offense and you're running your defense through that point guard. And, and, and the emotional side can be a problem. We've seen that with X when he's not in has control of his emotions. Yep. As good as he is on the ball and, and doing the same thing, stuff. Yeah, just a prototypical point guard effort tonight uh, by Jalen Hood Shafino. Yeah, I was really proud of him to not get caught up in the atmosphere as much. And I think yeah. I think he got a little yes. riled early, as we as we mentioned. But he really just kind of slowed everything down and locked in. Um, and, and I think that that the team fed off that a little bit. And and certainly he calmed Trace down a few times because Trace got a little wild at times. I'm mean, Trace, you know, he he missed half his shots from the field or, or close to it, uh, more than half his shots. More from than the field. half. But he calmed down and he was willing to finish strong. And some of those were blocked against the bigger guy. It happens, but. What happened he just didn't Trey. have his usual touch tonight. He missed no, some shots and, he normally No, and it makes. looked like he bothered his back a little bit at one point, but it turned yeah. out it was his face. I, you know, they said they said it was his lip, but um, I will say this about Trace: in the past, where he's played bigger guys, he's done this before this year. You know, uh, 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 done the positive this year, but when he's playing bigger guys and they block his shot, he starts to shy away. He did not okay. do that tonight, and that's the difference between Trace Jackson Davis as a junior and this run he's on as a senior. Is he just? It doesn't bother but failure doesn't bother him. He just goes right back at it. And yep. a guy that talented going right back at it, good things happen. One other thing I want to mention on Jalen too is the refs were letting Doug McDaniel be very handsy with him defensively. Didn't bother him. They were. He got in foul trouble and he was able to still keep playing the same defensive pressure, you know, applying the same kind of defensive pressure, even with the foul trouble. Um, so just you know, look, I know we had the six turnovers, but I just don't think you can say enough about what that young man did on the road in a big spot, you know, and Trace Jackson Davis, I mean, 28 points, 11 boards, you know, a couple of the blocks, the block that he had late was huge. It was not a goaltend. Uh, that was just a huge, huge play. Close, and no close. Yeah. You know, and, and I think coach like this is, this is the new Trace Jackson Davis where he's going up against a guy who's bigger. He's missing some shots that he normally makes. I mean, he missed a couple of layups, you know, that he normally makes and Ryan's right. It just doesn't phase him. And he's out there for the full 40 minutes. Look, you know, I don't know how sustainable playing Trace 40 minutes is and getting whatever it is, 85% of your scoring production from two guys. Like, I don't necessarily want to win this way all the time, but I don't care when we do it on the road, right? And I think the way that Trace has just become so steady from a production standpoint is just so massive, you know, for this team, um, you know, for them to be able to count on what he was able to provide tonight uh, and for him to just, you know, just stick with it um, because there's been a lot of games in his past where he hasn't stuck with it. And that's been kind of the big difference in this big run. He's playing more minutes and he's producing in all of them. Um, and so, you know, this isn't the most productive game he's had in this stretch. This isn't the best game he's had in this stretch. But, you know, it may as you know, it might have been one of the most important, you know, given the stakes and given, you know, what Indiana was able to do and going and stealing one on the road. And that's what you need from your senior. And, you know, as he's done, gosh, for the last two months, he did it again tonight. Just another really solid performance from Trace Jackson Davis. Yeah, he was tre he was tremendous. I, I, I just don't. Well, maybe back that off. I think he was better than average and good, uh, but he's got a lot of pressure on him, and defenses are set to attack him. And I thought at times, again, he had to do some things that maybe a kick out was, was more in line. But it's hard to argue with the guy who's just putting the team on, on your back. I, wow. I thought he really responded in the second half defensively with rim protection. I thought that's something that's, you know, really been a key for Indiana basketball the last two years. And today it really changed – their attack at the rim in the first half, they scored at the rim in the second half. Again, the, the defense was just fantastic. Uh, when we look at the numbers after the break, uh, the points per possession in the second half, uh, he was a big part of that. Geronimo was a big part of that. But I think um, I think Trace Jackson Davis is just every day bringing it, every day bringing it. He didn't hit shots today. That's about the only thing you can say about his play. And, and we're going to need him. And the question is – What's he going to have physically down the stretch uh, with, with playing all of these minutes? And, and, and that's just a, a question that uh, is unanswerable right now. And, and as long as we're winning, 
uh, let's just keep playing him, I well, guess, he, right? You know, and, and this might be a lingering question for later. He definitely had a few moments this game where he was kind of back to walking like an old man a little bit. Like he looked a little he looked a little beaten up. He did have that one fall early in the first half where he kind of fell on his tailbone that I'm sure every IU fan winced at a little bit. So it's tough, I think, to tell sometimes what is fatigue and what, what might be, you know, injury or, or, you know, something where he's feeling hurt. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, he just keeps gutting it out for 40 minutes and Indiana needs every last minute, you know, especially with, with race out. So he just, he keeps doing it. Um, it's it really, I mean, you know, it seems like hyperbole at a school like Indiana with a tradition like ours to say that this is legendary stuff. This is legendary stuff. What he's doing. I mean, Easily. this is just one of the greatest stretches of individual play, certainly that I've seen in my lifetime and that, uh, you know, I've read about or heard about what he's doing is just phenomenal. And the fact that it's leading to victories and Indiana's won eight out of nine, that's what makes it so meaningful. So just a, a tremendous performance by both those guys. And as we'll talk about the supporting guys, too, they may not have scored, but everybody was able to get in there and make a positive contribution toward winning. Um, and that is what good teams do, and that's how you go steal wins on the road. All right, coming up as we continue our breakdown of Indiana's one-point win over the Wolverines, we'll point out tonight's meaningful moments you might have missed, and then we'll go inside the numbers to highlight the most important statistical notes from the game. You're listening to The Assembly Call. Stick with us. Hey, this is Max Bielfeld, Big Ten champ and better than advertised sixth man of the year in 2016. And speaking of better than advertised, join Jared, Andy, Ryan, and Coach on the assembly call after every IU basketball game. Go Hoosiers. Max Bielfeld, who was there the last time we won at Michigan, that incredible 25-0 run to end the first half. Uh, we appreciate it, Max. You are listening to the assembly call IU postgame show. I'm Jared Morris here with Coach Brian Tonsoni and Ryan Phillips, and we are breaking down Indiana's thrilling one-point victory over Michigan uh, in Ann Arbor tonight. Uh, and it is the top of segment two, so you know what that means. Meaningful moments that you might have missed. Yes, it is time for tonight's Meaningful Moments You Might Have Missed, brought to you by our friends at Hoosier Ticket Project, where they help individuals and families experience IU athletic events in person for the first time through the generosity of alumni and fans to learn more about how you can donate money or extra tickets to help create meaningful moments for other IU fans. Visit HoosierTicketProject.org. That's HoosierTicketProject.org. So, look, I think, you know, you win a game by one on the road. There's a lot of meaningful moments that we can talk about. And so, you know, I think one that I think about going back to the first half, Michigan was up 32-21, to 21, and it really felt like a danger zone for Indiana. Indiana was not playing well. They were turning the ball over. Jalen had what has become a bad habit for him on the road, just made a really lazy pass. Michigan goes the other way with a really good opportunity to convert, and they don't. I think it was Joey Baker and somebody else that kind of messed up the transition. Indiana comes back on the other end. They run that nice little play to get Jalen back door and score. And instead of it being 34-21, it's 32-23. to Michigan missed a couple more shots. Jalen ended up scoring again. And all of a sudden, it's 32-25. What do you have to do on the road against a team that's kind of fired up like Michigan is? You've got to withstand some of those runs. And I thought that was a really key play, a little bit of luck in Michigan helping Indiana out by not converting, but then Indiana taking advantage by scoring four points. That was huge. Then they, you know, kind of did it again at the end of the first half where, you know, Jalen and Trace combined to score eight straight. Indiana goes on an 8-3 run that could have been 12-3, and they cut it down to 37-33 at the end of the first half, which I think everybody, based on how Indiana had played for the first 16 minutes, everybody's feeling really good. So those two runs in the first half were really big just to keep the game kind of in reach as you go into the second half. And then coach, you know, we talk about the second half and again, a lot of moments stand out, but Michigan went on a little run and pushed it out to 49, 42. You remember, I think Indiana had taken a, a little lead and then Indiana goes on that 10 0 run. Woody calls timeout, comes out of the timeout. We score. Uh, I don't remember what play we ran. I think we went into Trace. He scored the next possession. Trey drove and got fouled, made both. And boom, it's 49-46. And so that's what Indiana kept doing was, you know, Michigan would push it out a little bit. Indiana found a way to get it back within reach. And then what does that do for you? It gives you a chance to steal it at the end. 
And then Indiana made the plays, got the stops they needed. But I really thought, Coach, as you kind of go through the game and, and you reflect on what happened, those were huge, huge plays by Indiana to stop some Michigan momentum and just make sure the game didn't get out of hand. And they made it a dogfight at the end, and gosh darn it, they ended up winning the game. You know, But you had to have those little kind of you know four-point runs within the game to keep it manageable to give yourself a chance at the end. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I have the same timeout that you do, but I think that was a really key move by Woodson. He he gave um, he put him in a double ball screen, and then TJD yeah. on a diagonal cut into the post. So he went into TJD in the post, but he did it after some initial action, which <laughs> Ryan and I and everyone's been calling for. And then the defense was moved, and, and Trace Jackson Davis was going to score. Then the next time down after that timeout, they hit uh, Trace Jackson Davis in the high post and run that little scissors action where they can hand off and, and got that play. Uh, that was one timeout I know that that came back, and I that was an example again of. When you're a coach, you have to have your thumb on things when things aren't going perfectly. And today it was far from perfect. You've got to really massage it with your play calling, with your substitution, with, with what you're doing defensively. And I thought that uh, y your moment there was exactly one of those uh, for Coach Woodson. Ryan, you know, one other one that stood out to me, and this is back when it was 39-36, Trace had missed uh, shots on two straight possessions, really forcing it with his left hand. Yeah. And Hunter Dickinson, who is, I mean, those two guys have played a lot of basketball together. He was really overplaying the left hand. He was. And Trace came down the next possession, did that little up and under with the right hand to score, which made it 39-38. And it was just, it to me, it was just a little sign of the evolution of Trace's game. You know, he's added the passing and he's added some of these extra elements. He's able to go to the right hand a little bit more confidently. Maybe not as much he as he should. He did that a lot tonight. He did yeah, that a, a decent he did. tonight. And honestly, it felt like he had some more opportunities to do it, you know, because he really he stuck with the left hand a couple times where he was just shooting right into the Michigan player. But I thought, you know, that was another just little subtle sign of growth from him uh, and another one of the reasons why he's going on this run, because even though he's not scoring on a wider variety of shot types, right, like he's not hitting jump shots, he's not in spot up shots, he's able to do more with his post up opportunities because he can go to different hands, you know, do some, you know, has some different footwork. So. That was just that was a nice play by Trace to counter uh, what Hunter Dickinson was doing to him. Yeah, he went. He, he was. He's been going a little Olajuwon with the moves, just kind of mixing in different things and going to both hands. And and you know that the the thing that he's really developed and and that shows regardless is the spin move baseline for the dunk. Uh, is the the back to the basket spin move off of a guy for dunks around them, and or sometimes mm -hmm. he goes up and under and, and dunks it uh, with a reverse. Um, but it is impressive how he has expanded his game without expanding his range. And, and that is, you know, that's, yeah. that's rare that a guy does that. You either have those moves typically after a year or two or you don't. And he has this offseason. It's clear how hard he worked to vary his offensive game because the jump shot wasn't coming. And he's become a better free throw shooter as well. But the big change in his game is all of those post moves that he can use and the quickness of his footwork. Um, he was always pretty quick. He always had decent footwork. It's on another level this year, and that's why he's dominating. He's not just dominating because he's older. He's dominating because he's better. And yep. and so just seeing that evolution, I mean, you look at video from him from his freshman year, and it's a, he's a completely different guy. Uh, it's It's been a subtle, slight change every year, but I think the growth between his junior and senior year has been the biggest growth of his career for sure. Yes. Any other moments for either one of you guys that you want to discuss? Yeah, I'm just you got gonna, the one I was talking. You got the one I was thinking of. I'm just going to point out a, a couple uh, film session things that I think are going to be positives uh, tomorrow in the film session. And one was, you know, Malik Renu got back in foul trouble again, but it wasn't the handsy stuff. I thought, you know, he just got caught up in some things. But he had a really nice closeout on an X out in the first half. Really good stance, stopped uh, the drive. And I think that's an, uh, showing that he's growing defensively, even though, again, he reverted back to fouling. Uh, and then later, uh, in that same time he was on the floor, he takes a charge. And, and I know the announcers thought maybe he was moving or something, but I think he's really trying to lock in defensively. Uh, he's still a long way to go before he's ready to play a, a lot of minutes uh, and fill the race Thompson defensive void. I don't think he's ready for that. But I saw those two things that showed me that he's really listening. At the last two games he didn't file. Got back in that tonight a little bit, but he's still doing some positive things. And then the thing I enjoyed the best 
was uh, Jalen Hood Shafino setting a flare screen for Miller Cop in transition yep. as the big was bringing the ball down. Now it didn't it, it they didn't find him. There was no three, but Shocker there's your there. point guard. Yeah, there's your point guard who saw that the shooter was on the wing and his defender was inside and just went and set the the flare screen. That's that's recognition. That's a freshman. That's your point guard who's not just running to go get the ball. Uh, he saw an opportunity to help a teammate. So those are little things that you keep building in this team, and you're going to keep winning games on the road. You're going to win a, a, again when you're up against it and not playing your best because you stack those little things by different players. Uh, you guys mentioned it. I think it was Ryan, the, the non-stat people doing little things well. That's uh, how you win games. And, and, and the, the, non, game. the non the non the – Stat guys didn't play well tonight. I, I'm not going to say – I don't think they played well. I don't think Galloway had a great game. I don't think Geronimo had a good game. But they had moments. Like, they didn't hang yep. their head. Geronimo got a couple key blocks. So, yeah. you got to keep fighting even when you're struggling. And we haven't seen that from Indiana for a lot of years, that nope. you go on long losing streaks or you Especially get blown out. You get blown no, usually, out in the second half yeah, of a quite close game because you're down. Yeah, it's not happening if, with this program right now. Yeah, usually yeah. if guys are struggling on offense, their defense suffers. Or if they struggle on yeah. defense, their offense suffers. This team, like, these guys keep playing. And yeah. I, I will say they had that last year. They kept playing. Whether they played well or not it was, was, was a different story. But they kept playing. They didn't hang their heads as much. And you had a guy tonight, Tamar Bates, who I thought was forcing his offense to an incredible degree. I will say defensively, I thought he tried to move his feet. And so I didn't think he was great defensively by any stretch. But he was focused and trying to do what he could, and he was helping, and he was doing all those things that you're supposed to do on defense. I thought his offense, I think that he's got it in his head that on the road he doesn't do much, so I'm going to go find my offense and, and yes. you know, almost like prove that wrong, and that's where you fall into the trap. What you need to do on the road if you're a role player is fill your role and get to a spot where you can help out, get to a spot where you can cut back door, get to a spot where you can get an open look, don't take it on yourself to take on the opposing team one on one. I thought he just forced some stuff, but again, it wasn't an effort issue. You know, it wasn't like he he missed a shot and hung his head and didn't jog no. back on defense. Somebody ran down and got a layup because of it. He was back on defense. He was in his stance. He was trying to to do what he could to affect the game there. And I think that's the difference of the program that we've seen than the last you know, regime is guys do not get down on themselves and hang yeah. their heads. They feel like they have a responsibility to the other guys on the floor to not do that. He's getting better at that because he used Much to be better. a guy that his offense would really Much affect his better. defense. And you're right. You know, to come in cold and kind of force up that first shot, that wasn't a good decision. You know, that no. he misses the two layups at the end. You know, he got a couple of opportunities there in the second half. You know, he to me forced the shot coach, really badly in the middle of the lane. Like, you know. Yeah, you know, he's a guy. I mean, he's shooting 41.6% from three. You know, he's proven he can make them. Boy, he's a guy that I would really love to see something get run for when he gets in there to help him out to get Agreed. a shot. You know, because Agreed. he he is run into he that want, corner. He's trying, he's feeling the pressure for the offense, but you know, he's not as good at creating his own shot at Jalen as Jalen is. And I'm not sure he's quite reached the maturity level of Miller where he can just be out there and not get shots and still kind of be the same guy. He's getting better, but he's the type of guy that I would love to see because boy, if you get him going that can really be a weapon and that would help this team away from home. And so, you know, it's, give him, it's just give one, him things, one possession when he comes in, run something where he, you know, gets open or something, or you drive towards his side. And if the yeah. ball goes in, you got the 17 point Tamar Bates against Michigan state. If it doesn't and that, then, you know, you're going to have to rotate some other people in, but I do think some coaches do that. Uh, they get their star player started at a certain time. They'll get their, you know, their shooting guard started at a couple of times because you have to see the ball go in, in order to have that self-confidence. And that's why we always talked about don't foul a guy who's struggling. Because then he yeah. gets to the foul line, yep. and if he sees Number the shot go in, then all of a sudden then the, the regular play goes in. So there is some method to that, Jared, where I agree is if he needs to be a vital part, which we all think he, he does, I think the same thing for Cop. Um, in the first eight minutes, you can run a lot of stuff, see how people are guarding, and maybe get these guys going instead of right off the bat 100% through TJD. It's not a bad decision to always go through TJD, but you're talking maybe three possessions to get people an opportunity, maybe to just to hit their first shot, or even mentally, Jared, I think it helps. Oh, it, coach is running something for me. I don't have to go hunt a shot. 
Yeah, I, I would say that the, the thing that really got me is Cobb had a great game the other night and hit a bunch of threes. Tonight, he gets two looks in the first half. One was halfway down and out, and the other he nailed. They didn't run a single thing to really get him open in the second half. And, and look, Michigan's guys are bigger and longer and more athletic. It's going to be harder for him to get his shot off, you know, out of the normal run of the offense and a kick to the kick to the wing or a kick to the corner because those guys are going to close out. The, it's going to be really tough for him to get his shot off. That's why I think we've always talked about it. Put him in the pick and roll a little bit and have him flare out and pop, you know, cross screens, like whatever. And, and I know they don't do that. That's not what this offense is. But you just figure if you add that little wrinkle – it can really change things because cops hitting well over 40% of his threes this year. Bates is at 40%. Last I checked, he was above 40%. Galloway's at 50%. Yeah. I know Galloway's Galloway's never going to be a volume guy. He's making them this year, but he's not going to be a guy that's going to take five a game and, and have that percentage. But you, I feel like that wrinkle being added could change things for this offense when it's stagnant. And it was stagnant a lot tonight especially against a very athletic, very long team. You need to find other ways to do things. And it can't just be – they got they – got, they escaped tonight, and it's great that they won that game. I'm not taking anything away from this victory. They were the tougher team, which is the thing that matters the most, and they got yep. it done down the stretch. But in a game like that where the offense becomes molasses and is really struggling, a wrinkle like that, like you and I have talked about, can change the game and get that, oh, now we got to overplay this guy. Well, that opens up a lane for somebody else, and then that opens up something else. I mean, just once, run something like that, get that look, or run it until you get that look, knock down a three, and then you've got the change in the game. And so that's the one thing I think is next on the list for Indiana to really evolve as a program, is to be able to throw those wrinkles into the offense and find an extra gear when they need it. You don't have to run it all game. Look, they won this game and only took six three-pointers and made two of them. Um, Clearly, they're proving convention wrong by doing that. And the the same thing happened against Purdue. They didn't hit that many threes against Purdue, and they still won. But eventually, you're going to need that. And you got to yeah. find a way to do it. That's the thing. We have a top 20 offense in Ken Palm right now. And it kind of feels like we could have a top 10 offense, you know, if we got, if we got our guys more shots. So yeah, it's, that's it, what's great. And look, it's almost like you're winning with a hand tie behind your back. Cause there's more, to, there's more to come. Yeah. There could be. And look, look, there, there are things to nitpick. There were some stretches of basketball that weren't great, but we won on the road and that's what matters. And I, that's so I have tough. to pop off. It is tough. I got to go get my son to bed. I'm going to leave you guys in the capable hands here of uh, coach Tom and Ryan. All I want to say is, look, you know, I gave you guys my gut feeling before the Rutgers game, and it was spot on. I tried to give you guys my gut feeling today where I wasn't feeling good about this game. I thought we would win one of the next two. I just figured it was more likely that we, that we would beat Northwestern. I've never been happier to be wrong. I, you know, if I, if I have a bad gut feeling, I love being wrong. I am so glad that this team went out and played like they did today because the thing I followed up that tweet with was, But if we do come out and win, we are going to learn something very, very exciting about this team. And that's what we learned today. Like, this is different. You know, Trace and Jalen are just two spectacular players. The other guys struggled, but they fought through it to make plays at the end. I am just so happy and so proud of this team and what they went out there and did tonight. You know, Michigan, is they've struggled, but they're a very talented team that was clearly locked in on this game. And Indiana went out and found a way to win anyway. And so, you know, 9 out of 10, they're winning in different ways. It still feels like there's more meat on the bone offensively. I'm not sure you could ask for a better position to be in on February 11th. It's just a great place to be in. So proud and excited of what this team did. And very, you know, I just, I love watching them play. Very excited um, to see them against Northwestern. If I get my son to bed and you guys are still going, I'll be back. But with that said, I will hand it over to Coach. And I will see you guys later on. All right. Have a good evening. All right. Now it's time to go into some numbers. And and I'm going to start out with this number, Ryan. We have over 1,000 people watching tonight after the Indiana wins on the road. Uh, That is just absolutely incredible. We thank you uh, for uh, coming on the show and and watching us uh, do uh, what we we do. And besides that, the basketball numbers, uh, the one that stands out, I'd like to go back to what you said earlier about the second half defense. I did not write these numbers down in the stat sheets somewhere back in here in one of my tabs, but I think they were over 1.2 points per possession offensively in the first half, and I think they ended up uh, 9.6, 9. 
seven, something like that. In order to drop in a half, that's an excellent, uh, excellent, you know, defensive effort. Um, yeah, 1.194 for Michigan in the first half. Okay. Second was 0.75. There you go. In the second. So wildly different, and and some of that is Michigan had some looks and, and missed them or took shot took bad shots at, at times, um, but again Indiana was dogged defensively. Their rotations were on point. When they doubled, they rotated back. They closed out. They had hard closeout on closeouts on threes. I mean, the second half Michigan one of seven from three, and it was a Jet Howard three where he was off balance. I mean, you know, it, it, he shot it over Cop, and it was falling away to his left. That's the only three they hit in the second half, uh, and it was well contested. So, you know, Dickinson, I, I, you know, three of seven. He was their best player in the second half. He was only three of seven from the field, made three free throws. Uh, that's all he had. And so, yes, I agree. The, the offense um, or the defense turned it up against their offense and, you know, only allowed three offensive rebounds in the second half, too. And that's a long, again, a long athletic team that fired some threes and Indiana closed down the boards. And they were quick and athletic and talented. Yeah. I mean, they were expected to be at the top of the Big Ten uh, at the beginning of the year. They have dudes. And those dudes were hard to guard in the first half. They were beating uh, Indiana off the dribble, and the coverage just changed. I really give Coach a lot of credit for going to that zone for two reasons. It was it just slowed Michigan down for a little bit. Even different and I look. think it sent, it sent a message to the guys like, you're not guarding worth a crap. Like, if I got to go to zone – you're really not doing your job. And then they had a timeout, and then they adjusted something. And then from then on, I think at about the four or five-minute mark of the first half, what left in the first half, that defense was solid. Their stances, their closeouts, their on-ball pressure uh, was fantastic. And you have to do that against a team like Michigan on the road to have that, those kind of numbers statistically. Yeah, and, and What other numbers? I, well, one thing yeah. I want to say about that is, you know, Indiana played seven players. And they were able to maintain that defensive intensity for the whole game. And that's, I mean, kudos to those guys, and especially because, you know, Jordan Geronimo played 21 minutes. He wasn't expected to play that much, I know. And he clearly was, his, his leg was bothering me. He was minus 10 on the night when they were in with him. He just was struggling. Uh, but Malik Renew played 17. Tamar Bates played 17. The starters, the main guys, uh, Cop 39. Jackson Davis, 40, Hood Shafino, 33, and Trey Galloway, 33 minutes. And those guys all had intensity, defensive intensity at the end. And so just kudos to them for maintaining the energy, maintaining the effort. <laughs> I think they reserved a little in the first half when it wasn't great, so they had a little bit <laughs> little bit to tap into in the second half. But uh, really just, I mean, you know, you saw Trace Jackson Davis get to the free throw line at the end there, two shots to maybe make it a three-point game, and he misses the front end and it barely got to the rim. That's legs, man. He played 40 minutes. Those that was just a, a, a clear exhaustion issue um, there, but you know they still brought it on defense, and he was still there on that next possession on defense. He was all over Hunter Dickinson, and uh, you know, so I'll say that as far as numbers, um, again, I, I think pointing out the second half defensive stats as you started to was um, Michigan shot 32 percent in the second half they shot 14 percent from three uh, they were seven to nine from the free throw line which is the only reason they were in the game was they made they got they got to the, the line nine times um, and then you know you forced seven turnovers in the second half for Michigan uh, and uh, only four in the first half so just you can see the defense just ramped up the whole way and I'll also say something that's interesting it's given the size disparity um, they tied points in the paint. And and the fact that Indiana only got two bench points and won the game, again, just shows what kind of a game TJD and, and Huchipino had. Yeah, they, they were fantastic. They, another number that sticks out just shows some of the stagnation on offense a little bit. And give credit to Michigan. I thought they did a halfway decent job of guarding. But 12 mm -hmm. assists uh, for Indiana to 13 turnovers. And, and there were just yeah. some – I don't know if they're road turnovers ugly, or lackadaisical – turnovers Coach, um, it was ugly it was one of those things where we're not like we're super happy about the win just to everybody out there so if, if it sounds like we're we're poo-pooing things it's it, it, it we're stoked about the win but the, you know it was ugly i mean it was ugly both <laughs> ways you know I mean, like it's, there's no there's no way around that you went on the road in the big 10 you are thrilled because it's really hard to do especially against a very talented team like michigan doesn't mean there's not stuff to clean up there's plenty to clean yeah up. There, there were several guys who weren't sure. You know, Cop does gets credit for a lot of stuff, but he was coaching on the floor too and telling Geronimo where to go on all the sets. Um, 
it's so yeah, great. there there was a lot of there were a lot of things, but winning on the road is just brutal. Uh, you see it up and down, uh, you know, college basketball. Xavier goes in and loses oh. at Butler last yeah. night. Uh, it's just it is a very difficult thing to 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 do on the road. And you can learn through winning. I know coaches and players said, oh, you need a loss every once in a while to get their attention. Well, you can get their attention in the film room. Like, guys, this game was a game of lost opportunities. 37-33, and we miss a couple layups. Our defense wasn't good for the first 14 minutes. We let them get into the 30s. You know, in the second half, we had six turnovers. You know, if we take care of that, cut those mistakes in half, then we have a little more comfort on the road. That's how good you can be, and that's got to be the message, I think, um, I think going forward because statistically and, and even to the eye, this wasn't a, a great game other than just a fantastic fight and grit uh, from, from the guys. Yeah, how about this? Uh, everyone other than Trace Jackson Davis and Huchifino from the field, 4 of 15. And again, just more evidence that those guys played well defensively. I mean, you give them credit for the effort they put on defense, the the role players, but four of 15 from the field and you somehow go into Michigan and win. I, you yeah. know, you go into Nebraska and win with those numbers. You're like, yeah, because it's Nebraska. We had that at Minnesota. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you win those games. You're just sort of like, okay, yeah, no, that's because the other team's not very good. Michigan has, is not in the tournament right now and has not played well this year, but that's a team that could beat anybody in the country. If they're on, they are that, and they were playing better and they were playing better over the last, you know, two weeks or so. And so getting that effort from your two top guys is, I mean, staggering and, and that wins it for you. But also those role players on defense deserve a lot of credit for stepping up with yeah, the two other guys. We talked about it, too. When you're having an off night, do something. Yep. Next possession. Find a possession to get a, a, board. a block, get a rebound, take yep. a charge, You know, just close out the right way. And I think a variety of players who might have struggled statistically had moments like that. Uh, yeah, and that's Geronimo just um, a great block. Geronimo would not have a good night. Had a great block at one no. point to save a basket. Yes. I had two blocks in the game, but one that was, uh, you know, a key late in the second half. Um, again, cop played great defense. Only got three looks at three. And one of them was heaved at the end of the shot clock, you know, because Trey Galloway made a pass that he shouldn't have. Uh, Malik Renu, I thought, you know, he grabbed two rebounds, made two key free throws uh, to keep sort of keep Indiana in, you know, within striking distance. Um, even though he struggled with foul trouble all night. Tamar Bates, I thought, effort defensively. Trey, uh, Trey Galloway, effort defensively, even though he kind of struggled on offense a little bit. I mean, everybody did something, you know, and you're just stacking bricks and building a house when, you know, two guys are doing all of the masonry. But you got you to you have some other things going on there, too, from those guys. Absolutely. So, nice win on the road. Statistics aren't great. Other than you add a one to the win column. You add a one to the quad one column you add one on the road and maybe see your efficiency numbers uh at least stay where they're at or, or not get better not, but coming up on this badly on the assembly call we hand out our game balls and who's your hustle award discuss a lingering question or two and look ahead to indiana's upcoming opponent that's all next here on the assembly call stick with us What's up, y'all? It's Devontae Green, giving you the green light to watch Assembly Call after every IU game. Just don't listen to their opinions about shot selection. Remember, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Go Hoosiers. You're listening to the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. Catch us live immediately following every IU basketball game, plus every Thursday night at our website, assemblycall.com. Also, make sure you sign up for our free IU Hoops email newsletter. Over 9,000 of your fellow IU fans have have subscribed. Join for free today at join.assemblycall.com. That's join.assemblycall.com. I'm Coach Tom Sony here with uh, Ryan Phillips, and we're breaking down Indiana's one-point win on the road at Michigan, and it's uh, now time for our game balls, which are presented by our friends at Bloom Environmental, where Allie and James and the crew help folks in southern and south-central Indiana maintain healthy air quality in their homes or business. Learn more at uh, bloomenviro.com. 
And when you mention this ad, you get 23% off all of their testing services. That's 23 in honor of TJD. All right, Ryan, who gets your game ball? It's Very one of two an- people. Very anticlimactic. <laughs> it's the man who went 40 minutes and just played his – tail off uh J- trace jackson davis 28 points 11 rebounds three assists um had two blocks against a matchup that you know has bothered him in the past and and i will never forget and it bothered him some tonight it did it I mean, did he kept playing through it whereas i think last year especially at home against michigan you know following that big win against purdue he just really struggled and was out of the game early. And he, I mean, he, again, we've talked about it. He's a different dude this year and just continues this incredible run he's on. He was 11 to 23 from the field. He was under 50%. And he just kept going. He kept believing in himself and knew I can do this. Um, I, look, I know Zach Eady's numbers are hard to beat, but there's got to at least be some question about who the national player of the or who the who the Big Ten player of the year is. He's 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 making this a conversation when he probably shouldn't be because of the numbers are yep. so stark. Um, so here's the thing about Trace. One of my favorite one of my favorite stats. The final score was 62-61. Trace Jackson Davis went 40 minutes, so his plus minus was plus one, one. and that's the only one that matters. <laughs> Uh, I'm giving it to Trace Jackson Davis too. You know, he's the stir that you know he's the straw that stirs the drink. Go. Let me say I, that I, right. I knew uh, what you were going for. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's hard not to when you have a double double and and you just have ha- have the whole team on your back. I think you could have talked about Hood Shafino being that secondary guy running sure. the show, playing great defense, scoring some points. But uh, too many turnovers probably for for game ball for him. But he would be uh, honorable mention uh, game sure. ball. He's second. So, I mean, there's no. He's a very very tight second there. But yeah, but that's, it's got to be Tra- Trace. Is just he's the he's the sun around which this team orbits every game. That's Trace Jackson's Davis 754th game ball of the season. <laughs> Actually, it's 15th of the season and. Um, a bunch of other people have one or one or two, but congratulations, Trace. Um, we, we just love watching you play. We appreciate uh, everything that you do. Um, and now, the Hoosier Real Hustle Award. Hi, this is native Hoosier Anthony Leo. I pride myself on hustling every second I'm on the court. So it's an honor to present this episode's Hoosier Hustle Award, sponsored by our friends at Evansville Security Services. Based in the hometown of IU legend Calvert Chaney, Evansville Security Services provides off-duty police officers to businesses and individuals throughout Indiana. Their goal is to provide whatever level of safety and protection you're looking for. And just like hustle can't be measured by stats, but is often the difference between winning and losing, the prevention of bad outcomes can't be adequately measured either but it can still have a huge impact on your bottom line and peace of mind. So let Evansville Security Services help you prevent a bad outcome today. Go to EvansvilleSecurityServices.com to learn more. That's EvansvilleSecurityServices.com. All right, it's time for the Hoosier Hustle Award. I think I know where you're going, so I'll let you go there because I think that's where I'm going as well. Take it away. It's Miller Cop for his defense, man. I and, and also playing coach on the floor. That probably took some yeah. energy. But also he played 39 minutes. He was second on the team in minutes. It wasn't Jalen Huchavino. He played 33. Uh cop. Um ton of effort tonight. And and you know, we've we've talked about him recently. Just his defense is exponentially better than it was when he stepped on campus. It's night and day. And and again, he'll never be an elite all big ten defender, but when you're okay and you put in full effort, you can be good. And he was good tonight against Jed Howard and did a great, great job, particularly in the second half. But his, his effort was there the whole time. But in the second half, I mean, you know, Howard in the second half was held to uh, three points, one of six shooting, one of four from three. And his only three points, again, were a three-pointer that was well defended where he was falling away to his left and drained it. And, and it was one of those shots where <coughs> it happened – and my first reaction was, well, if they're making those, this game's over. Like, you know, you get there's nothing you can do about that. And, you know, sometimes you get those bounces at home. Turns out, hey, I was wrong. I'm willing to admit it. Um, but really just a great effort from Miller all around. Uh, and, and, you know, 
he didn't stop on offense. He did what he was supposed to do. He just didn't get the open looks. Uh, defensively, though, he put in a huge effort. Yeah, and, and I'll vote for Miller Cop as well. There's You're starting to see – why coach has trusted him for a couple years to be in the starting lineup. And we went through an off season where everyone was saying you'd move him out of the starting lineup. There's something about being in the right position it, it, that can be hustle as well. You know, when he you're very executing, rarely hurts you very, yeah, rarely he gets, you. he gets hurt off the bounce when there's a more athletic player. And in the first half, they were isolating a uh, cop, getting the ball to uh, Howard when cop was on him in a position where Howard could drive it. And they kind of went away from that. But he really does a good job of being in position. And the one thing I texted you guys, I thought he got caught up in a poor closeout. Really, uh, Bates was screened. They, they were Xing out on it. That was that third man switch stuff that they were doing. It looked like that nail s- slot rim, but I think they were going to X out against Michigan, and Bates got caught up in a screen. So that was maybe credit Michigan for screening off of the ball screen. And Miller saw it. And then went out to close out. So sometimes it's it's not the guy closing out's fault. It's the guy that is you know who didn't make it there that the teammates trying to cover. And that's just an example again of of cop trying to do things to help Indiana win win games. So Miller Cop, I believe that is his fourth hustle award, which puts him in second place behind Trey Galloway's five. It broke a one. Two, uh, a five-person, four-person tie for second. So Miller Cop is starting to rack up uh, the Hoosier Hustle Awards, and uh, we appreciate his contributions to tonight's victory. And now it's uh, t- <clears throat> time for a lingering question, and I'm just going to throw this one out to you, and if you have one, you can uh, you know, add to it. But I think the lingering question is when are we going to get guys back? A little load management tonight maybe uh, for race uh, and, and his – health, uh, sitting him out, trying to get him healthy for the stretch run. You get a win without him. That's just a bonus because you really need him for the glue guy, the defense. Uh, I thought it took a long time for Indiana to get where they wanted to defensively without race out there to start. And when is Xavier Johnson coming back? A lot of rumors. I heard it on the pregame. Uh, a lot of people talking on uh, betting shows, whether they're going to take the Hoosiers or Michigan, whether Xavier Johnson's coming back. So there's a lot of talk about Xavier Johnson coming back. I think that's the lingering question right now is when are we going to get back to full strength and how do we incorporate those guys back into the lineup without missing a beat? Your thoughts, yeah, Ryan? I'll say about Xavier, if it was up to Xavier, he'd be playing right now. But I think the <laughs> doctors are the doctors are yanking that chain back, you know, not not letting him out yet. Um just just kind of pulling the holding the leash, you know, wait till you're fully healed before before we unleash you. Um but he uh, he's going to be back, I think. And again, Indiana kind of struggled to 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 play when those guys went out. I'm interested to see how they will handle them coming back. Um, whether right. they go straight, whether he goes straight in the starting lineup like Race did. I think Race went in the starting lineup the the game he did because they wanted to get him warm right off the bat because of the knee injury, and they and then he didn't come back, you know, because he sat down for a while. Um, so, do, do you think I, there'll I, be a limits? A minute, probably for his first broken game. foot. I would yeah. think probably for his first game, and I think it'll be less broken foot and more game shape. You know, I right. mean, you know, if, if they're putting him back in, they, they're they're fine with the foot. They they won't they won't put him back at sixty percent. Right. You know, I I think um, because it's a foot and it it can get absolutely irritated if it's not ready. So I think that he'll be in when he's healthy, but I think that, you know, game shape is a real thing. And, and you've seen it with Ray Thompson getting winded pretty quickly. The, the game against Purdue, I think just cause he's in his final year, uh, he actually got a, a third wind at the end and played really well down the stretch. But for the most part, he's, you know, getting back into it. You can practice as much as you want. It's not the intensity of a game and, and, and you're going to have to build that back up. Um, so I think there's going to be an integration period there for, for Xavier. Um, but yeah, when do they get healthy? And and race, I have heard that this is not a long term thing. I don't want to talk about what the injury is, but I've heard it's it's not a long term thing. He'll be he should be okay. It was just a something kind of came up, and uh, hopefully he's back next game. Um, but yeah, it, it you know it is because Indiana you feel like hasn't been healthy since early December really, and uh, you know such a key guy in in Xavier to be without him is 
it is tough. It's real tough. Yep. And Jalen Huchfino has picked up the slack, but you get a game from Jalen where he's one of 14, like, that, like, like at Maryland. And it's really helps to have a guy like X there who can defend and, you know, help create shots. So that's again, Indiana's ceiling is going to depend on two things, health and those role players. How well do those role players yep. play? That's the ceiling of the team. And, man, you get those guys back, you might start being able to decrease some minutes a little bit too if that becomes a concern. Like, we, you know, you're playing these guys 40, 39 minutes out of necessity because you want to win. But now there's been a big enough cushion, uh, I think, that, uh, you know, you had six games left. I wouldn't say Indiana's a lock for the tournament because you can't lose seven in a row and probably make the tournament. But you are very, very close uh, to being in the tournament. Now it's just you want to keep winning for seeding. So you get those guys back, and you can pull some well, minutes we already, because you have other weapons. Haven't we already matched last year's Big Ten win total? Was it nine last? They went nine and eleven last year. Yes, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So one more, and you're already a step better than last. I mean, we expect you to be much better than last year, but right. You know, you, you've you're in a good. You've put yourself in a really good place with this run, to where you know. I mean, you don't obviously. I don't want this to happen, but you can make a mistake here or there and still be in a really good spot. And and so right. at Northwestern, and, I think that's I think that's one they they should win. They should win that game. Uh, yes, they lost and, and it at home. Make up for it by winning on the road. Let, let's let's go there right now because we usually preview. We won't have a show before the game on Wednesday. First of all, the women play again on the road against a ranked Ohio State team, and they are number two in the country and playing fantastic basketball. Yeah. So tune into that, and then the and doing the guys, work. If you haven't been watching, podcast, I'm straight up, if you're not a women's yeah. basketball fan and you have not been watching, tune in and watch it. They are fun to watch play. It's not just they're good. Absolutely, they're yeah. fun. Go watch Fabulous. them. This is, this is the best team in Indiana history, and they're going to lose some people after this year. They're still going to be good, but this is a an incredible year, an incredible team, and they are a blast to watch. So tune in. Watch the women, definitely. So they play on Monday, and then Indiana travels again uh, to Northwestern, but they have three days off. That was key. Uh, you know, when traveling to Maryland, Ryan, they only had two, and, and it was at a stretch of several games in a row, and I thought yeah. they played – uh, up, you know, down to that level. Uh, they were, looked a little tired even today. I thought people were gasping for air, but they had three days off after two just mentally and physically draining games at home against top-notch quality. So that's another good thing to come out and be able to win after the emotions of playing Purdue and Rutgers. That shows some toughness too. And then you got Northwestern, who I believe the, the score was in the 80s, at Assembly it Hall. It was, yeah. So, Northwestern's having a great defensive team. Uh, uh, they're a great defensive team. They're causing a lot of turnovers. Uh, they've done a lot of good things defensively. We've already shown, without the full team, because race wasn't playing, that you can score against Northwestern, and Indiana's playing better defense. Gave up a lot of points against Northwestern. So, if you can just switch that yeah. a little bit, then, again, I, I, I'm expecting a win when you go into Northwestern. Uh, Northwestern still needs wins to get in the tournament, and – they haven't played as well at home as as they have on the road. So, your thoughts about that Northwestern game up on coming up on Wednesday? Yeah, it's it's the one they should win. I'm sorry, like I, you yeah. know, some guys are going to make crazy shots and annoy the hell out of you with Northwestern. I mean, that's that's how I feel. It. They got to limit the three point line. Something they were struggling with at the time. Northwestern had seven in the first matchup, which is you know. You should still win that if they only hit seven, but you know, Boo Booey can't can't destroy you, and yeah. and you know that's. I thought that's they gave up the drive a lot, if I remember right. They did. Some Nobody the could guard the drive. The drives. That, that led yeah. to threes, and so and the kickouts. Uh, they were straight line driving, and that was when Indiana was really struggling with the straight line drive and recovering to the three, which are the two things that right. Northwestern exploited the entire game. Uh, Trace that's when had, that nail slot rim stuff yeah. came out, and they were giving up that point drive yeah. and then kick that to the, the wing, game. and they were just burying threes that was the game that Jalen had 33 um and yeah. kept Indiana in the game and Trace had 24 rebounds so you need a big game out of both of those guys on the road whenever you go but you need the other guys to step up it's a smaller arena I think on the road guys are more comfortable in a smaller arena the the, the bench guys tend to be um Malik Renew that's a game where he could make hay I I think yeah. when he's in there um, hopefully you get race back to eat up some fouls and eat up some time. And hopefully Miller cop going back to that arena feels comfortable and, and you can get him free for some shots. They, they have to do that. They simply have to find ways to get him shots. He's, 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 he's holding up his end of the bargain. He's defending. And when he's open, he's hitting his threes, get him the ball, 
with, with openings. And and uh, and Tamar Bates needs to be better, and hopefully it's a bounce-back game for him. And the fact, Ryan, that they lost at home uh, to this Northwestern team should bring a little more focus and motivation, and the start is going to be the key. T- tonight, I think it took about 12 to 14 minutes for Indiana really to start feeling their way offensively and defensively, and it almost cost them. A game that they're going to have to, you know, not necessarily up ten in the first four or five minutes, but just the decision making. Take those singles, take those doubles, you know, make Northwestern guard you the way you want to run offense. Don't hand them turnovers and 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 pick sixes the other way and and get that you know crowd going and and get their team energized. Slowly, methodically, do what Indiana does on offense. Do what Indiana does on defense, and Indiana should be able to come out with another. A road win. But you're listening to the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. Remember to check out our friends at Home Field Apparel. Use the promo code HOME uh, at checkout to get 15% off your first order. And now it's time, Ryan, uh, for last call. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, we want to get in and get out uh, and get ready for the big game tomorrow and then go celebrate this win. So your thoughts here on Indiana's uh, one-point win on the road at Michigan. Yeah, I have just about my longest day of the year tomorrow, so don't at me. It's it's like a 10 a.m. to midnight day, so just just leave me alone. Um, not that I don't love hearing from you guys. I'm just not going to be able to help you out with anything. Um, and that wasn't necessarily just for the listeners. Everybody in my life, just, just leave me alone. Uh, you know, look, this was an example for Indiana of things did not go right most of the game. And yet they still found a way to win. And and the determining factor in games like that is toughness. And they were the tougher team mentally, physically, whatever. Down the stretch, Michigan, Michigan was up, you know, like what, six, eight in the second half and lost at home. I mean, if we were if, if that was an Indiana game, we'd be real upset about that. Uh, you had the chance to put them away and you didn't. And Indiana kept clawing back, kept making runs. And in the end, they were mentally, certainly mentally tougher and physically tougher than Michigan. Michigan didn't score in the last five minutes and 12 seconds of this game because of Indiana's defense. They were tougher, they were stronger, and they were mentally tougher, something that this Indiana team has begun to show over the last few months. That's eight of nine wins from Indiana, and they have put themselves in a great position, not only for the tournament, but in the conference and moving forward to the dreaded Big Ten tournament, of course, as well. Um, But that's what you've got from this team right now is they are tough. They are mentally and physically tough, and they are winning games because of it. And I'll say, I mean, what more can you say about about Trace Jackson Davis? We've said it. You can't. Enjoy it while it's here, guys, because this is, I mean, you're not going to see this for a long time. I mean, and and it's not that Indiana want to have good players. They want to have high scores or big rebounding numbers or whatever. But a guy in his fourth year doing this and improving and continuing to absolutely dominate you're not going to see this again for a very long time because guys who are this good usually are gone by this point. He stuck around and he is getting better and better and better and doing it against good competition. And also give a head nod to, to Jalen Huchifino for the game he played. But on top of that, all the other guys for playing defense and filling a role when they didn't have it offensively. So this was a team win. While those two guys stand out, this was definitely a team win and that's what makes it the most encouraging. So... Great win for Indiana, one that I think a lot of people were a little bit pessimistic about because the way Michigan have been playing, it's a tough arena to play in, and the matchup isn't great for Indiana. It's a a long athletic team, which they struggle with. So going in and getting this done was a huge, huge deal for Indiana. So credit to them all, and uh, credit to just how tough and resilient this team has become. And and I'll end by saying congratulations to the staff. I thought this game was uh, well managed and, and controlled the, the young guys when they were struggling and got them to a place where they can win the game. And to everyone else, we're, we've won eight out of nine, and we could add an all-Big Ten caliber guard in the next week or two. Uh, it'll, it might take some time to get him back into the swing of things, but if we're winning eight and nine and we could add that, I think a lot of programs would be willing uh, to to have that situation ahead so a lot of bright things ahead for indiana basketball both on the women's side and on the men's side but that's going to do it for our show tonight if you want to see us do the show live and be part of the live chat make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel youtube.com backslash assemblycall.com and don't forget to join us at join.assemblycall.com to join our free email newsletter several thanks to bob thompson for the music you hear 
on the show. Special thanks to John Ringer of RiggsDesign.com for designing our logos. And thank you for listening. We'll be back again on Wednesday after the game at Northwestern. Until then, take it from me, Nick Sizeloft. Keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim. And as always, go Hoosiers. All right, I got to get out of here, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Catch me if you can, Coach T. It's going to be a good night at the Tom Sony household. Coach Tom, happy. Coach Tom is happy. <laughs> Coach Tom to ground control. All right, everybody. I got to go. Great win, everybody. I got to go get something to eat and then rest for tomorrow, my 14-hour Super Bowl day. Have a good one. Read read thebigleague.com all day tomorrow. Please click everything. Who's winning? God, that, people have been asking me. I think the Eagles are the better team, but the Chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. So it's a really hard one. I'm going to pick the Chiefs because I always pick the better quarterback. I tend to lean that way when I think things are even. But I, I think it's going to be a great game. And if you say the Eagles, I'm going to be like, yeah, it's fair. You know, I think the Eagles are, are a great, great team. I think, it been, honestly, before Hurts got injured, they were probably the best team in the NFL. Then he got injured. They kind of, you know, they were still good when he came back. But I did think earlier today, though, you know, if Mahomes had Hurts as receiver, or like somebody somebody said, like, if you swapped quarterbacks, you swap teams, who wins? I'll make the Eagles blow it out. And it's not that Hurts isn't yeah. good. It's that those receivers with Mahomes, oh, my God, it would be incredible. And that that offensive line. And, yeah, so I uh, I would say Chiefs. Um, but I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I really do. I think both are great, great teams. Uh, so I hope I'm, uh, I hope I'm right about that, and we get a good one. I'm, I'm on the Eagles. I wouldn't but... blame you. They're, they're so good. You know, I, it really, that is really a really difficult one for me. It, this is yeah. the hardest pick I've had in a long time. Last year I picked the Rams because they were at home. I love Joe Burrow. It was hard to pick against Joe Burrow, but I picked the Rams, yep. and for most of that game I was wrong. And then the Rams came back and won it. I thought Cup and, and Stafford were going to pull it out, and they did. Um, but so I thought, but I thought that was going to be a good game, also, and it wound up being a good game. So I'm just hoping for a good game. I don't have any money on it. I don't have any, you know, leanings one way or another. If the Chiefs win, it makes the Chargers look bad. So I'm kind of cool with that <laughs> uh, division rival. Um, so yeah, I I don't. Uh, and and yes, I'm 100 percent okay with the Chargers looking bad. So, but I think it's going to be a great game, and I think it's I think we're all going to. I do too. Game. Yeah, I think it's two quality teams, and hopefully it's a it's a tight game right down to the end. Yeah. And uh, it's two of the teams that have been two of the best all season. Two of the they've been top four all season. Those two teams. Yeah. So, you know, I'd say that the the five best teams in the NFL this year, all year, were the 49ers, the Eagles, not in any order. 49ers, Eagles, Chiefs, Bills, and Bengals. And yep. four well, of that AFC teams, is tough. And four of those teams were in their conference championship games, which never happens. I mean, yeah. you could argue you could argue the difference between who's better between the Bills and the Bengals. That's pretty even. So if let's just say you give the Bengals the benefit of the doubt, the four best teams were in the conference championship games. So you were going to get a good Super Bowl no matter what. So yeah, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a really really good one, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, look who pops back in. We're in after dark here, J- Jared. Oh, he's coming back. Pop, you, he's coming back. The the five hundred and sixty two people who hung on for a little Super Bowl talk get to get to have Jared back for a little bit. Is he in or what? Oh, Yo. There he is. <laughs> up, we fellas? just talked trash about you for the last half hour, so that was it's okay. I deserve it. Hey, you know what? We're just starting the numbers it. now because we just I didn't. We just went into trashing you. We haven't even done the numbers or the game balls or anything. We've just been bashing you for thirty minutes. I'll take it. We're joking. I deserve it. I deserve it. Hey, look, I thought I didn't think they were going to win this game today. I thought they'd win one of these two and that yeah. it was more likely they'd beat Northwestern. I was wrong. I, I, I'm happy to I, be wrong. I'll say this. I, no, wasn't you as pes- yeah. I wasn't as pessimistic as you were, but I didn't feel great about it. I mean, Michigan's a mm-hmm. long athletic team that this program struggles with right now. They don't have the players to match up with them, really. Um, on the road at a place they haven't won. And, you know, I totally get being pessimistic about it. Now, I wasn't as pessimistic as you were. I, I read that, and I was like, Jared? is the, what, Who wrote this? This has I'm to be. Yeah, but even, I'm just trying even to be then, he comes back with the positive. I really think. Yeah. He comes back with, but if we win. Yeah. Yeah. So and It's not like I thought it was impossible for us no, to win. No, no, I, I know. I, I was I, with you, though, Jared. I, I thought this game was going to be tough. I was, you know, we said that on Banner Friday that 
you know, yeah, it's a tough this team game. was it's hot. Michigan's matchup. hot. They have studs. It's a tough yeah. matchup for Indiana. Straight is. I mean, it's like it's like you know when you play Arizona. That was a tough. It's a tough matchup. Well, a tough matchup for anybody, but a really tough one for Indiana with the size and athleticism and all that. You play Michigan. It's they have size and athleticism and guys who are six eight who can hit threes and that Indiana doesn't traditionally do well with that. And a tall yeah. guy, a guy who's bigger than Trace Jackson Davis, defending him. Those are, that's a recipe for not winning. Indiana was just the tougher team. That's what it came down to. So yeah. I think that's team. I think that's part of why all three of us were so excited when we got on here yeah. before the show. We're like, like, yeah, let's get like this started, man. We got team, good energy. It felt like we beat a top five team with our energy afterwards. But it's they, yeah. this team. Well, and I, I saw. That. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. get off after this, but I will say. This team and what has been most nice about covering and following this team is they continue to surprise you with mm-hmm, some of these right. wins, and especially during this streak. I mean, it's it's not just winning. It's how you're winning and how you're going about it. And then, of course, Trace doing everything, but he can't do it himself. So there's other contributors and it's the way they're doing it and doing it with defense on the road at a tough place to play. And only winning. I mean, if if I told you they were going to score sixty two points today, what percentage chance would you give them of winning? Like zero, negative yeah. fifty. I like, but it was they did, you know, what they needed to do in all the little ways to win it. So, and the numbers. If you look at the numbers, there are some positive numbers for Indiana rebounding. They out rebounded them. The the paint points were even, which against the team that big and that athletic that can drive to to play them to a standstill in the paint. And it was one shot and Indiana ball, especially at the end of the game when Michigan kept missing. Indiana yeah. did not give them second chance. Rebounding. So you guys probably talked I'll, about that. But. And I'll say that I'll say this too. Indiana had about four possessions late where they could have extended the lead and they kept missing. I'm like, oh man, they're gonna regret that one. They're gonna regret because I just figured Michigan would make a shot. The guys are too talented. I figured somebody, even if it was contested, would make a shot and give them the lead and all of that. But I would say that. Yeah, they just play. I mean, Michigan didn't score the last five minutes of the game, Jared. Mm-hmm. Zero points in the last five <laughs> minutes. Uh, it's just, it doesn't make sense that that's the way it went down, but it did. And uh, I'm thrilled. So, all right, I'm going to go eat and uh, get ready for my horrific day tomorrow. But you guys. What's going on tomorrow? Super Bowl. Hmm. 10 a.m. to Megan, midnight. Megan's got tax day tomorrow. She's got taxes yeah. for 14 hours. 10 a.m. to midnight oh, that was, is my Super Bowl day. So. That was today and tomorrow. <laughs> I saw a little chatter in the, in the uh, chat. Bob. All right, guys. I got you, Megan. See you, man. All right, Coach. Man, uh, I'm excited. How, what'd, you, what'd you read tonight? What was the, what was the story tonight? We read uh, Little Critter. Uh, we wrote a book called Six Hogs on a Scooter. And then uh, we read... Hey, a- Purdue, <laughs> you brought a Purdue story in. <laughs> yes. That's very nice of you, Jared. <laughs> Six Hogs on a Scooter. That's about kids going to class at Purdue. It is. It is. I will, ne- I will never That's look my, at that book in the same way again. That's my favorite. Even hogs get to go to school. Oh man, I'm just I'm just so happy that win. That that's such a great win, man. I mean, it's gosh, you know, it felt different because that's not a game that we would have found a way to win. You know, and man, just I'm proud of him for sticking with it, you know, especially guys who were struggling all game. You know, one thing I didn't get to mention earlier, you know, and you mentioned about Malik Renu. And I know I saw, you know, some a, a couple notes in the chat that, you know, Malik played horrible tonight. I didn't feel that way. You know, I felt he got some fouls, but the thing about his fouls is his hands were up on all of them. They weren't the old right. Malik, like, lame hand check fouls. I think he ended up guarding a couple smaller guys going toward the basket and made contact with his body, and a smaller guy is going to go a little bit further. Like, I kind of felt he got some tough foul calls, and that prevented him from really yeah. getting into the flow offensively. But this wasn't the type of, like, quote-unquote, poor Malik performance that we saw a couple months ago. This was, I thought, just a couple bad ticky tack fouls. You know, he took a charge. Yeah. I thought he made some plays. Um, so I just, I didn't have that same read on Malik's play. I he wish got he put in a bad more, position late, but yeah, he got put in a bad position late when a kick out, and he was so wide open, uh, he didn't know what to do with it. He he kind of wanted to shoot the three. Then he thought, no, I better not shoot the three. Then I better drive. And then he traveled. That's that's yeah. not good. I mean, he struggled, but. He wasn't bad, bad. It was just right. foul trouble, and then you had to go a different way. He wasn't playing well. I guess what I to mean get is more minutes. 
yeah, like it's not a but, concerning game where it's like, oh no, man, he backslid. Not at all. It's like he just never quite got in the flow. But some of the mistakes that you were seeing before were not the same ones he was making here, yeah. which is what you want to see from a young guy. That's what so, I said. That anyway. that closeout was perfect. He was in a low stance. He moved his feet, cut off the drive. Um, yeah, the ball the ball didn't bounce his way when it got to fouls because those guards just, uh, you know, um, but. You know, he's still got – they all have things they got to they got to clean up a little bit. When you only score 62 points and, yeah. you know, you give up 1.15 or 1.9 in the first half, the defensive effort was not there. But they followed it up with great defense. They followed it up sure with making did, key plays on offense, right, enough to uh, w- win the game. So the bottom line is, do you win the game? You know, Yes, you coach per- for perfection, and you're going to point out all those things, but – Winning is is the only stat that really, really matters. And we're doing yep. a hell of a lot of it. And I think I saw, I'll have to get the exact quote, but I think Mike Woodson said, this is the best win since I've been here. You know, and maybe that's getting caught up in the moment a little bit, but man, those tough, hard-fought road wins like that. I, no, exactly. I can, I can see why he would say that, you know. Because everyone had to reach deep into their toolbox. Yeah. Players had to reach deep into their toolbox. The coaches, like when things aren't working the way you design them or want them to, and you you try this and you try that, and a player bounces back and does this, and Geronimo gets a couple blocks after being totally out of position, and everyone stays with it enough to pull out a win in a tough environment against them. Those are solid. Those feel good when you're coaching <laughs> a player because you know, man, we weren't doing things well, and we just we just kept scrapping and scrapping and scrapping. Um, man, that's, that's a awesome. nine donut, you know, kind of, <laughs> that's a nine donut kind of morning tomorrow at square donuts. Everyone head to square donuts. Ah, uh, free ad. Sorry. That's, a, that's an inside joke for those of you who did not listen to banner Friday, but <laughs> that was a great line. <laughs> All right. I don't even know where we're at. Did you guys do final thoughts already? Is we're this done. Like, is, yeah, oh, we're this final is... thoughts. We've signed oh, okay. off. This was AC right, after dark. <laughs> this is yeah. just extra stuff. This is just all, right, all nice. extra big win energy. What is this? Uh, did you guys talk? What does this do for bracketology purposes? I mean, getting another that's a quad I, one. Yeah, I'm gonna win, have right? to. I'm yeah, I'm gonna have to look at it um, and add. It's gonna be fun when I go across the spreadsheet and add a win, then a road win, then a quad one win, and compare it. Mm-hmm. Indiana's probably, to be honest with you, stuck at the five seed for some time being. If if they win at Northwestern. They come home and win again against Illinois. Now you're probably talking where you could compare to four seed uh, territory. They're getting closer, uh, but the biggest thing for all of, all of our people still with us, some 500 people, uh, is that a win simply doesn't move you up a seed line. A, a win just adds to your resume, and then you're comparing, you know, to the teams of TCU and UConn. Both teams lost, by the way, which kind of helps that argument. Yeah. Um, St. Mary's is in there in the four seed line, Xavier. So, so there's a possibility. I know uh, a certain bracketologist has us at the four seed, but he's usually the worst one anyway. Don't follow him. <laughs> um, but yeah, solidly on the five and really getting closer to that four seed. But I, I probably won't move them there till next Friday. If they beat Northwestern and TCU loses on Monday, uh, or UConn loses in their next game, then there's a spot. There's got to be a spot to move up. You just can't move up because you win. There's got to be a spot. Um, and it usually takes teams above you losing a couple of games. But, yeah. We're, we're further away from the six. We're closer to the four than we are from the six. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, I mean, just fur- further solidifying things. So, wow. And by the way, you know, I did see, you know, some people – you know, Indiana entered today's game against Michigan 21st and Ken Palm, you know, we're now 20th. You one thing to remember about, you know, the way that those things update, I think Indiana was favored by one. So we essentially played to expectation uh, today. And that is what those sites measures on a per possession basis. Let's, you know, let's flatten everything out and let's remove, you know, the biases of pace and different things that come into it based on the different styles on a per possession basis. How do you play? And Indiana essentially played today you know, two expectations. So Indiana now 20th in Ken Palm, uh, 19th overall in offense, 40th in defense, you know, so didn't move up, didn't move down. Um, you know, so I wouldn't, I would not get too caught up with that stuff. Like Indiana is in a really good position, all the computer metrics, now just win games. That is what matters. Yep. Just go win games. And, you know, you win enough games down the stretch, you know, we'll, you know, we're going to have to play well enough in some of those games. I mean, right now, 
you know, we are projected to win against Northwestern, projected to win against Illinois, projected to lose against Michigan State, lose against Purdue, and then win back-to-back at home against Iowa and Michigan. But then the overall projection is going three and three. So what that means is, you know, each individual game, you know, like against Northwestern, we're projected to win, you know, 70 to 69. You know, so it's really close. So they're saying you're projected to win all four of these, but you'll probably only get three of them. And we'll see, you know, what happens. I certainly think this team has done enough now, you know, where you could reasonably look at the rest of the schedule and say, yeah, we could go four and two, five and one down the stretch. You win a game like this, that gives you all kinds of confidence in ways that we didn't have before, you know. So this I, I, I got to tell you, Coach, I, this win was kind of a game changer for me. Um, in terms of this team, like we've seen this team do it at home, you know, we're able to blow out Illinois on the road, but there was just something about this game tonight, man. Like it really, it makes me believe in this team more, uh, even though they didn't play well, just, you know, what they did coming back the last 26 minutes of this game, it's just, it's visceral. Like there was just, there was something that happened when that final buzzer sounded and we won that. You know, some of those some of those reasons why I think some fans were still keeping it at arm's length a little bit where it's like, well, I don't know. This answered a lot of those questions in a really, really meaningful way, I thought. Yeah, I, I said so yesterday on the you know, the last three games combined have really I know it's easy to say, Mr. You know, obvious when you win three games like this that you feel better, but you know, you can have a five-game winning streak and some of the balls bounce your way by who you play and when you play them. But when you beat the number one team and then you beat the team that's been your nemesis and then you go on the road against a very hot athletic team and win uh, and you overcome some poor play and poor decisions, then it really makes you feel good. And, you know, we're going to take a loss at some point, uh, more than likely down the stretch. But it it's, it's just closer – to to feeling better about this team and this team's chances. You know, I think they're really favorable going into Northwestern. They they should have a little bit of an edge getting beat, giving up that many points and playing that bad defense against Northwestern. And if they play any any ounce of defense against Northwestern, I think Indiana can score. Uh, And we got some time to rest, too. I like that that's a Wednesday game. Yeah, I think Illinois at home is going to be tough, um, but I expect to win that. And then you got two brutal road games. You're playing with house money. If you win the next two, you're Ooh. playing with house money for the most part in those last two home road games and then come home and beat Michigan and beat Iowa again. Um, you're, you're sitting sitting well. I do think you want to try to get off the five seed because yes. there are some 12 seeds that are scary. Um, Oral Roberts – can do some things. They're they're sitting on that twelve. Charleston sitting on that twelve. Liberty, you yeah. know the dreaded twelve five upset where it happens two times a year. Those are talented teams, very very talented teams that are capable of 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 winning a game against anybody. And I know it'd tick us all off if we would lose that, obviously. But it's not like you're even mm-hmm. four thirteen is is. There's some 13s that are – VCU's pretty good right now at the 13 seed. But I'd much rather do the 4-13 than the 12-5. Than the but, but really, I, I would take the 5 and knowing when Selection Sunday's coming, I don't have to stress. It's oh, just man. when they call Indiana. It's been, what, 19 years since we've had that kind of comfort? <laughs> well, six anyway. So seven yeah. since 2016. But All right, Coach. This was fun. Let's yep. go cheer on Andy's Eagles tomorrow in the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't, I don't really my, have that's a team. Where my money's so at. My brother-in-law is an Eagles fan. Andy's an Eagles fan, so I'm going for the Eagles. Plus, Jalen Hurts kind of reminds me of Jalen Hood Shafino. They have similar well, – they look first, the same. First name. Same name. Well, that – and there's just – yeah, but I don't, there's something more. There's something about them. Like, they're, you know, really – something about their body language that reminds me of each other. I don't even know what it is. I just, I think it every time I see Jalen hurts. So I'm going for the Eagles. So go Eagles. Hopefully it's a fun game. Hopefully Absolutely. Ryan, Ryan, you know, makes it through <laughs> all the Super Bowl coverage. We'll be thinking about him. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't think about him one second. <laughs> I'll be thinking about eating. Getting By the some way, cake. My favorite, my favorite new drop that we're going to have to find a time, but it'll probably be after a loss, I imagine, when we're going to have to use this. You're a basketball fan. Be an adult. That's right. Brendan Quinn. Exactly. Great words. Exactly. You're a basketball fan. Be an adult. Be an adult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. 
These wins are so much fun. Right. It's just fun to linger on here for a while. A- absolutely. Like, you don't want to go. Like, hey, just hold on. I'm going to go get a piece of cake. I'll be right back. Yeah, let's come back and talk more about this. There have yeah. to be some angles me, we haven't discussed yet. <laughs> let me grab a cup of coffee. Uh, we'll be right back. We got 500 people still in here. We ought to stay. 500. Ah, 495. Five of you who just dropped off. That's weak. Uh, all right, Van. Hey, Banner Friday was fun. I thought I, I enjoyed fun. both both our, our guests and, and just fun. The question and answer part of that is really a lot of fun. I agree. And I think that's good for our community members. If you're not a part of our community, that that's a, a really fun thing. We had a bunch thing. of people join. We got a bunch of new members. Yeah. So, we'll, you know, we'll try and do that when we can. It was really nice having Brendan to come in and kind of give the, you know, the opposing – viewpoint so we'll try and do that with the banner fridays that we have left uh you know like what we got illinois next saturday i mean i don't really want to talk to an illinois fan um but maybe we can find you know someone who covers illinois that can give us oh i'm on i'm on the show so oh that's right you're the you're the illinois fan that's right yeah mr brad Brad underwood's biggest fan over here that's right we'll just talk to you about illinois you know everything about them (laughs) I passed up media credentials to their game today. I had, I had media credentials, but I wanted to watch IU, so good. I didn't go. I didn't go over. <laughs> How you doing, oh, Jay? Good. Is Jay in here? Yeah, I don't think I don't he's know. in here. I don't know where he is. There's no telling. All right, everybody, have an awesome Saturday. Enjoy the Super Bowl, and uh, we'll for sure talk to you guys Wednesday. I know the doing the work crew will be here. We got another big women's game Monday at Ohio State. See if they can just keep rolling. Um, I mean, as long as I keep wearing the shirt, I don't see any losses coming. The shirt's magic. Absolute magic. All right, y'all. That's awesome. Good night. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all soon. <clears throat>